mega storms inbound. We're talking mega hail, mega wind, mega lightning, and mega storm structure. Maybe even a couple of tornadoes, but not everyone's gonna get in on the action. Who's most at risk? And what's the weather gonna be like for the rest of us? All that and more in your forecast starting now. Whoa! All right, guys, to begin the video, just wanna give a huge shout out to Lucas Munzinger, a part of Midwest Storm Trackers who captured this epic footage of a tornado in Iowa on April 19th. We had a ridiculously active stretch of severe weather starting Thursday, continuing all the way through Easter Sunday. We even caught a tornado live on stream on Thursday night. What a very active past couple of days it has been. But like what normally happens after we have a couple of days of severe weather in a row, we now are pretty quiet as of Monday, April 21st. We do have some red flag warnings out here in Kansas and Nebraska, where some elevated kind of fire conditions are gonna take place. And we do have some flood advisories and warnings down here in Missouri, which got all of those storms yesterday. But else than that, pretty quiet. We could get some severe weather this evening in Eastern Ohio, Pennsylvania even down here in Tennessee and Alabama. But the tornado threat is gonna be up here in Ohio where we could get an isolated tornado, only a 2% risk though, not too worried about today. Make sure I have a way to get warnings. Now where things get interesting is starting on Tuesday. We are expecting a stretch of severe weather out on the plains day after day after day this week. And it starts tomorrow on April 22nd. We've got this big area of slight risk that's in mainly western Texas into the peninsula of Oklahoma and up into Kansas. Now the main risk for these storms is gonna be large to very large hail. We're talking limes to lemons to baseballs out here with these supercell storms that form right along a dry line. See, there's this 15% risk for some very large hail. It includes places like Amarillo, Lubbock, even down here in Midland, Texas. We are very, I am very familiar with this area because we've chased here almost every year. We do have a 2% risk for some tornadoes tomorrow. That isn't that big of a risk, but I'm telling you, when you get these isolated supercells, magic can happen right along that dry line. The good news for the rest of us across the country on Tuesday, we're gonna be just fine. Now, how's this thing gonna time out? We're gonna start here Tuesday morning, nothing really going on. Things really aren't gonna pop tomorrow, Tara, on sunset right there. Notice, by about 7 p.m. Central, we've got some storms that pop in western Texas and then start to slide to the east. That is when we'll likely have a couple of supercell thunderstorms here each of these are gonna have large to very large hail and possibly a tornado or two. Now, why are these storms popping tomorrow? Well, it's not because of a cold front, it's actually because of a dry line. I'm gonna pause it right there. A dry line is basically the boundary between very moist air, moist, and very dry air. Dry. This model shows you the dew points, which is measured how moist the air is. And we've got 20 on one side and 50 to 60 on the other side. There's your dry line. That is gonna be what is your initiator for storms on Tuesday. Now the dry line will be what initiates storms again on Wednesday as we've got this big area of marginal risk. That's only a one out of five risk, but I'm telling you, looking at the models, I would not be surprised if they upgrade this to a slight risk. We could have another round of very strong storms right off the Rocky Mountains, right along the, in the Western Plains from Texas, all the way up through Nebraska. Now, interestingly enough, the NAM has some action going on during the day on Wednesday up here in Kansas. That could actually complicate the forecast. That could also increase our tornado threat for storms that ride right along the boundary because as those storms push to the south, there'll be a boundary here. So if any storms were to fire here and then ride right along that, that could actually increase our tornado threats. We're gonna have to watch that very closely. Wednesday, even though it's a one out of five day, anyone up in Nebraska all the way down here through Texas is at risk for some supercell storms. And anytime we have supercells, large hail's a guarantee and tornadoes are a possibility. Hey, that rhymed. I'm like a poet. You better know it. Hopefully I don't blow it. Now after Wednesday, we're not done with severe weather on the plains. We likely will have several days in a row where we do have some sort of severe weather possible from Texas through Nebraska. This graphic in yellow, this is like a slight risk here that you see on the Storm Prediction Center sites. We've got a risk Wednesday. We've got a risk Thursday. We've got a risk Friday. We've got a risk Saturday. Even a little bit of an area on Sunday. So we likely are gonna have several days of severe weather for the same spots where some mega hail and amazing storm structure and maybe a couple of tornadoes are all 
Gonna be possible. All right, well, that's the weather for the planes, but what the heck is the rest of us gonna feel? Well, I got news for you. We are about to be warm, baby, warm, as basically the entire country finally experiences lasting warmth. We've got above average temperatures expected for everyone east of the Rockies, baby. Spring is finally here. All right, we talked about temperatures, but what about rain? Who's gonna get rain over the next week? And I got news for you. The big winners are gonna be ding, 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 the southeast here where we're gonna have several inches of rain that fall with all of that heat that's gonna build in the southeast. And we're talking 80s and 90s here. Folks in Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina are gonna enter into more of like a summertime pattern where there's gonna be daytime storms that bubble up, drop a bunch of rain, then die, and then another one right next to it bubbles up, drop some rain. Good luck trying to predict where those storms are. So meteorologists in the south Feast, their credibility is gonna tank because someone's gonna get rain and they're gonna look at the forecast and be like, oh, it's only 50%. What the heck? Why isn't it more? And then the person who didn't get rain is gonna look at the forecast and say, 50%. I didn't get anything. There was no rain. Can't win. You just can't win. And then, <laughs> and then the Texas and the plains from Kansas through Oklahoma are also going to get a lot of rain as several rounds of severe weather impacts them. And the upper Midwest here in the Northeast will get some rain, maybe some showers, but we're really not talking about severe weather. That's more just like kind of your average rain. Interestingly enough, Florida, which is off to one of its driest starts that I can remember is not gonna get any rain. So Florida, very dry conditions are going to persist down in Florida where there's a lot of vegetation. So if we don't get some rain soon, we could be talking about some fire conditions down there. I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple of fires start to pop up in places You'll probably see that on the news over the next couple of weeks down there in Florida. All right, guys, we are only two weeks away from the official Stormfront Freak Storm Chase. We are going storm chasing the first week of May. If you're out in the plains, better see you there. We're going to be live streaming the whole thing. If you guys want an idea about the shenanigans we're going to get into, go ahead and check out our storm chases from last year. If you go to our YouTube page, go all the way to the bottom, find this playlist. It's the Stormfront Freak Chase Week from 2024. Check out these lovely and very entertaining videos to give you an idea about what we're gonna be like. I got news for you, it is crazy. You may never watch anything like it again in your life. This is the cat of the video. It's warm cat because we're all gonna be very warm over the next couple of weeks. Thank you for joining me today. Find someone, tell them you love them, tell them you care about them, do something nice for someone today. Thank you for being here from the bottom of my heart. This is Stormcat 5 and I'll see you on the next one.